Hello, Annika Lina here, and I'm here with Rock Versace from Mashery. Mashery. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you are one of the premier API companies. Uh, but what exactly do you do? Because for a Swedish audience, you're not really that well known. We get it. We're not quite Twitter yet here. <laughs> yeah. So what Mashery does is we help companies um, turn their turn their perspective into a platform versus a product, right? So instead of saying I've got a iPhone project, I've got an iPad project. It's let's let's look at ourselves differently. Let's look at ourselves and say let's take all of our underlying services and data and present it to the outside world through an API which we manage. So we don't write APIs. Mm -hmm. We actually manage them. We want to separate out the management of your API from yeah. what your API actually does because if you start hard coding rate limits into your API, you kind of get stuck. It's hard to change. You need to go back to tech ops and you just can't work as fluidly. So what we do is we offer, we've been in business for six years now, yeah. and uh, run, if you look out there at the best API programs out there, they're either homegrown, like Facebook, Amazon, and Twitter, or they're, or really they're ours, right? Yeah. Netflix, and New York Times, and Guardian UK, and Best Buy, and a lot of other really great um, companies are running their APIs through Mastery. And uh, yeah, so we our product is... I kind of break it down into market measure manage, right? There's a developer portal where it's your welcome mat. It's, hey, we're open for business. We, we really highly recommend you take care of that portal and your, your forums are up to date and you're making it really easy for the developer to know this is something we care about. And that is your develop. I mean, the developer's using your service or the developer using my company's API? Oh, it's always the developer using your company's API. Okay, yeah. Our service is just a, a layer, right? Mm -hmm. It's that middle layer. Think of the old XML gateways as just Mastery is a new rendition of those for the web services mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. right? Built to, to handle the, the web services, mm -hmm. right? Not internal soap the you know, machine to machine yeah. kind of thing. And so. Um, think of it that way, right? We're, we're never presenting mastery to, to the customer. The we're, no. we're, we're helping you present yourself as you want to present yourself mm -hmm. through that portal. Then our traffic manager is what you proxy your API call through, so we are the traffic cop. Mm -hmm. And we do the rate limiting, very granular, like by key, by developer, by app. Uh, things by hour, by second, by minute, so that your back end is safe. Because even a, a trusted partner or an internal developer could make a mistake and hurt your back end, and you don't want that to happen. And then the final piece, the analytics, which uh, which lets you know who's using what, what error codes are you throwing, how are you doing. And we run all that on top of a multi-tenant SaaS infrastructure. So all of our customers are on the same product. They all get the same upgrades. All they have to do is wake up and they get the new releases. <laughs> And that helps us accelerate, mm. accelerate innovation, accelerate. We're not encumbered by on-premise software that we have a bunch of older customers on, so it really lets us respond mm. quickly. So if I have a um, um, dynamic site or I have an app, but not an API, and I come to you, what happens then? So we usually say you have an API whether you realize it yeah. or not, right? If you're transmitting any data over HTTP, you have an API. Mm. And whether that API is, is the way you want to present it to the outside world, we have to figure it out. Mm. What do you want to do? Do you want to present it as RESTful so people will really adopt it for mobile applications? Do you have a bunch of partners that want to continue to use SOAP because they're more comfortable with it and that's what they want to use? So we help you take whatever it is that you're using to get data in and out of those systems and dress it up in the way you need to dress it up for the consumers of that API. Okay, so it can basically be any kind it's of. It's very fast, and yeah. we're only a C, we only C name your 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 endpoint, mm -hmm. right? And so what that means is we're proxying it. Where so we have to earn your business every day too, yeah. right? If you don't want to use us, you just point around us. Mm -hmm. But we think that the value of the protection and the marketing and you know, the developer portal and the analytics really mm -hmm. outweighs why you would want to have a naked. We call it a naked API, an API that doesn't have any management on it. It's a naked API, yeah. and it's, it's a little risky. And, and do you get a lot of developers that actually do have a sort of proper API but comes to you for, for the management? Oh, sure, yeah. right. So Expedia came to us, and they're very sophisticated, yeah. right? Uh, and they were only going to use us for open, right, contests and things like that. But both on the business side and on the technical side, they said, wow, this is really a great tool. I can manage my business. I can protect my back end. That was the business development guy and the CTO. And they said, we want to run all our traffic through through this service, mm -hmm. right? And so Clout runs a bunch of their traffic through 
uh, mastery, not all of it. They have a couple different uh, channels, but billion, billion yeah. queries a month, right? So scale, scale's a funny thing. Scale is, there's different ways to talk about scale. There's scale in terms of the number of queries you're doing per second, per day, but there's also scale in your ability to handle lots of developer keys, mm -hmm. right? We have some of our customers have four or 5,000 developer keys, yeah. and that's a hard thing to manage, yeah. right? Uh, once you get over 30, 40 uh, different consumers of your API, it gets very hard to manage yeah. on your own. And then there's also scale in your ability to respond quickly to changes in the market. And our, you know, the way you configure the proxy with us is through point and click radio buttons. Mm. It's all virtually all configurable. Mm. And so a business user can use it. Like Comcast is a big customer of ours, and they said, compared to the gateway vendors, they said, I need a tech ops person to make any change in that. With Mastery, a monkey can use your, your console, right? It's so easy to use. So it's a tech guy's view of the business world. <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's really important to make it, make it easy to use. Do you have uh, more, I mean, completely open APIs? I can use it whenever I want and I don't pay uh, the provider anything. Or is it more um, captain APIs where, you know, I can try it out but over a certain limit? You know, with 150-ish customers, it's yeah. all different. Some mm -hmm. you don't even know have an API. There are some really big-named retailers in the U.S. in particular that have closed API programs, and they're using them with their with their internal resources and with design agencies to get iPhone and iPad apps mm -hmm. primarily out for in time for Christmas and, and those companies did really well at Christmas uh, with their with their apps and, and the thing is with with retail in particular if you don't use an API you're you're limited in how creative you can be mm -hmm. with your interface mm -hmm. right? and, and the experience that you offer to your users and that's for your apps. They're, the affiliate of the future in retail are the red lasers and shop kicks mm -hmm. and these mobile that are geo aware and, and you know the, the four square angle and the sociability. So the affiliates of the old days or even today with retailers are link hijackers. Yeah. They do a better job with SEO than you do and they just yeah. skim off the top and add no value, mm -hmm. right? But in this world with the those companies I mentioned, they're adding a lot of value, right? Mm -hmm. They have a lot of users, yeah. right? So it's another channel. Yeah. And if you don't have an API for them... You can't work with them. Well, it's very hard. Yeah. And even if they screen scrape and then show somebody a product that supposedly was at your mm. store, but the color's not there, the size isn't there, the mm. price is different, it gives Red Laser a bad... Um, it gives the consumer yeah. a bad impression yeah. of Red Laser. Yeah. So certainly they want real-time inventory, they want real-time pricing, mm. they want to know what's there and what's not. So you have to have an API not just for your own application but to be on all the other interesting things that are popping mm. up which ha are happening every minute it yeah. seems. Um, you mentioned a lot of big companies and, and a lot of um, companies with a long history like mm. New York Times and The Guardian but what about startups? I work a lot with startups mm. and, and uh, if can a small you know newly fledged startup come to you uh, and actually make the business model work? How much does it cost? Yeah, so how much it costs is, it really depends on what you're looking for, mm -hmm. but there is a, um, there is an initial entry point around 30K US mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're in that kind of startup -y yeah. thing. And, and I look at that in two ways. One is... Per month what, or per no, year? Per year, or per year. Per <laughs> what could you do with 30 grand that's going to have a bigger upside? Yeah. Right? And two is if you only have one person that's going to consume your API for six months, then, mm -hmm. then don't do it yet. Right? That's not great. But I'll, the real kind of harsh message I have for, and this, I did this with a buddy who had a startup for a year and a half. He had been working on the GUI, the, the website. Yeah. And I'm like, you need an API because I like what you're doing, but I'm never coming to your website. Mm -hmm. I want it in, the, in my Salesforce environment. Or I want it where I'm doing something else. He's like, that's where it's useful to me. So you need an API. And in the worst case, I told him, you know, if no, if you open your API and nobody comes, then you can get on to doing something else. Because if you if you hang on for another year, you know, he's a high powered guy. He could probably make fifteen thousand dollars a month at a job. Yeah. So if he goes out of business in three months instead of twelve months, <laughs> he's making fifteen grand a month for nine more months, right? I mean, sometimes you have to really be willing to say. I want to put my content out there, and if nobody wants it, I probably don't have the right business model. Yeah. So startups have to, you know, I had a conversation with a startup yesterday, and he said he had 
50 to 70k for six to ten months. I'm sorry, 70k for six to ten months. Mm -hmm. Like that's not a lot of money. No. And so you, I told him, you know, you should wait because you need some time for this thing to pan out, mm -hmm. right? And you can't run out of money in two months because you just didn't give it a long enough runway to play out. So there are times when you do have to let a startup play it out yeah. and, and say, well, get a few consumers of your API first, mm -hmm. get some feedback, and then, then, you, then you manage it. On the other hand, you know, even big companies like Zappos who want to manage their own API and then they come up with like a Google Docs uh, portal, it doesn't look serious, yeah. right? And so, and, and they have a phenomenal brand and a very loyal following. You would think that they would have lots of innovation, but when you come up with a you know, Google Docs web developer portal, people look at it, you know, they're not serious about yeah. this. I'm not yeah. going to get support on this. Why yeah. should I start? Yeah. And so, and I don't know, that was a while ago that I looked. I don't know if they've updated it since, yeah. but it really does, it is your marketing. And yeah. if you believe that, you know, it's... API mobile then website mm. versus the old days of website mobile API. Mm. If you believe that, you got to get the API out there. You got to you got to prove it. You got to yeah. put it out there and see what happens. And do you think that that uh, if if I have an API and leaves it to you for management and so on, uh, how easy is it for me to extract that? Because that's a question I got when I, I, I told people I would yeah, meet if you, you. If you don't think there's value, mm. you you point around it. Mm. Right? And there, there have been companies that, that go out of business, right? Yeah. So clearly they're, you know, they, on their waning days, they point around it. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, if not that many people are consuming it, it's mm -hmm. not that big a deal, mm -hmm. right? We're not a good fit if you have one consumer of your API with lots and lots of calls. Yeah. Because you probably aren't limiting them anyway. No. There's nothing to manage. So you wouldn't do that, right? You want us when you're, again, when you're getting that three dozen, four dozen mm. consumers of your API, and they're, maybe they're all a little different, and you're really looking at this as a way to, to become a platform. Yeah. Right? And you've got, you've got a real business. Yeah. Right? We always, I always start a call with something on, on, the, on the lines of, if you're calling us, you must have big plans with your API. Mm. Tell us about it. Where are you? Mm. And we don't want to take anybody's business if they're really not ready for this yet. Yeah. It just doesn't do us any good. Yeah. Do you see, uh, I mean, there's becoming a real hype around APIs today. Um, and there's a lot of data locked in legacy services, uh, locked in, in very old, uh, perhaps government systems or bank systems and so on. Is that things you can work with or does it already need to be out there on the web? Most of the time we can work with it. Mm. We very rarely run into content that you simply can't get at, mm. right? It's funny because when you mention government, a yeah. lot of government agencies, oh, we have, to, we have to publish this and they throw out a CSV file, yeah. which nobody ever does anything with. And there are companies out there that will take those CSV files and crap them into an mm. API, which we can then handle. Um, we don't, that's not part of our business. Mm. It's not that hard to do. We just don't focus mm. on it, right? Um, but we haven't met that many. And every once in a while, we'll see an API that's, remember, we're multi-tenant SaaS, right? Yeah. So we're not going to, it's for the good of the community, right? So we build lots of security in based on requirements from American Express. And we build lots of, you know, PCI compliance because, you know, retailers What's are What's PCI uh, for a Swedish PCI, audience? yeah. It's, it's <laughs> the ability to take credit cards. Okay. The next, yeah. For lack of, you know, more granular. Um, and so personal card information or something yeah. like that. And so um, it's, that's driven by retailers. And the whole features I was talking about um, in the other room about packaging and things like that, that's for data services mm -hmm. companies. So sometimes we'll get a feature where, or we'll get a prospect that's like, we have to take this API and we have to do something really weird with it for a particular partner who has a lot of calls. And so that's not really what we're, no. what we're good at. Mm -hmm. You should just get some little gateway, configure it, and then run that traffic through. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, come back when you're really looking at this is, I've got lots of underlying services, I've got lots of consumers of this, and I need to manage this as more part of my business than a point, mm -hmm. a point solution. I know that uh, a lot of Swedish companies or and, and government bodies like to work with uh, somebody in the same time zone, <laughs> yeah, or 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 uh, you know a European or Scandinavian representative. So mm -hmm. so you, I know you're based in San Francisco. I know you have presence in London. So how does your plans for?
or world domination looked like. Yeah, you know, Europe's a funny, funny animal because there's so many different privacy and language and other issues. So we are in London now. We've mm -hmm. had customers there for a long time, but we just put a couple people there now, and they'll handle the mainland Europe. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what we'll see what comes. Right? It's yeah. it's really interesting in the states. If somebody wants to do business with us, they always find a way. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, they they say, oh yeah, you're right. This is you are secure. You are safe. You are what we need you to be. Right, um, and we, we have a lot of opportunity, so mm -hmm. it's just a matter of prioritizing, right? And so, you know, it's you know, Germany's a tough one, right? I mean, it's it's a really challenging one due to a lot of the privacy, and it's it's just not a good bang for the buck right now, yeah. right? But this, you know, here at Bizno, this is this is a company that absolutely must have an API. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just data services. It, the data is the money. And so we can we can help those companies a lot. Well, thank you and thank welcome you. to Sweden. Thank you. I know my first day. It's great. I love it's it. It's ten below zero. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Thank you and we'll see Annika Lidne from uh, Open API conference at Bissell.